Welcome to St. Mary's Harefield's Thought for the Day for Tuesday, the 21st of April. The joy of Eastertide is based on the Christian belief that Jesus was raised from the dead. So although it feels like a strange Easter this year, it still has its joy to give us. Our opening hymn, This Joyful Eastertide, is not sung quite so much today, but it communicates joy through its unusual tune, which comes from a 17th century Dutch melody. This joyful Eastertide, away with care and sorrow, my love the crucified hath sprung to life this morrow. Had Christ that once was slain, ne'er burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen. Had Christ at once was slain, ne'er burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked and no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts today, that we may be touched afresh by joy. May we seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace, to the praise of God the Father. Amen. So we're looking this week at various people we encounter in Matthew's Gospel. The idea is to give an understanding of Matthew's Gospel by meeting the people he introduces to us. We started yesterday with Abraham, which took us back about 4,000 years to meet this Old Testament character the founder of the Jewish nation. Today we're introduced to Joseph, the earthly father figure in Jesus' life. Our reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, where Joseph is told by an angel about the forthcoming birth of Jesus, and he accepts him as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Well, the amount of information we have on Joseph, the father figure in Jesus' life, is underwhelming. Apart from a couple of passages in Matthew and Luke's Gospels, that's it. Matthew looks at the birth of Jesus from Joseph's perspective whereas Luke tells the story from Mary's point of view. In Matthew's genealogy that we mentioned yesterday, Joseph's lineage is traced back to King David. We can see from the passage we've just heard that Joseph, from the word go, is in a bit of a quandary. 
His fiancée Mary is expecting a child, and he knows the child isn't his. So we're told that because Joseph was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose Mary to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph shows himself as a person of great integrity, who tries to do the right thing and tries to do it in the right way. He doesn't want to put Mary in a situation of public disgrace. He treats her with extreme kindness. There is a noble quality to Joseph's life. He is a righteous man. The appearance of the angel to Joseph helps in terms of explaining things. He then changes his mind and plans to go ahead with the marriage. This isn't an easy option for Joseph. There would be rumours circulating and Joseph would carry a bit of a stigma in a close community that could be quite judgmental. Joseph does marry Mary, and the evidence is that they go on to have other children too. We don't have a comprehensive list of the names of these children, but they include James, Joses, Judas, Simon, and daughters. Joseph is described as being a carpenter, at least the Greek word used is tekton, which is more than a carpenter. Joseph might well have worked not only in wood, but also in stone. So there are two contributions that Joseph makes by implication. Firstly, he works, using his skill to support Mary and Jesus and his family. Also secondly, he trains Jesus in the craft of carpentry, probably more general building work. So Jesus becomes able to work, something that we tend to forget that he then does for the majority of his life. For something like 17 years Jesus did this. His public ministry is only in the last three years of his earthly life. Some strange apocryphal texts about Joseph emerge in the second century and later in the fourth century. These can muddy the waters about Joseph's story if we look at them, but they're very unreliable and are probably written because of the lack of other information. Joseph is last heard of in the Gospels texts when Jesus is twelve. That's when he gets left behind in the temple at Jerusalem. Joseph isn't around at the cross and resurrection, so presumably he dies sometime during this period. Tradition has it that he died quite early in this period. So Jesus then becomes the worker, the carpenter, whom Jesus was trained by Joseph. And Jesus takes over from Joseph as the wage earner for the family. Joseph appears to have been a godly person, in his commitment and his character. Very helpful for Jesus in his home life, his experience growing up in the synagogue at Nazareth and travelling to Jerusalem every year for the Passover festival. Joseph's closeness to God would be indicated by the appearance of the angel to him, which happens again to warn him of Herod's intentions to kill the children in Bethlehem. Jesus' life is spared because Joseph acts in escaping to Egypt. And very simply, Joseph is a good human father figure in Jesus' life. How valuable is that? Priceless. Jesus probably shed quite a few tears when Joseph died and undoubtedly felt his loss keenly. The hymn, Lord of all hopefulness, asks God for various benefits which faith can bring to us linked to different times of the day. It includes working life, so the contribution of Joseph and those affected by a lack of work in the current lockdown, well, this hymn has words that might apply. We are praying in this hymn for your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day, for your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day, for your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day, and for your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day.
of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plane and the lathe. Be there at our labours, and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. So let's pray. Joseph the worker, as he is described, shows us the importance of work. And so we pray today for all those who are working harder than ever in many ways to keep life going under lockdown. We particularly think of those who support others and who depend upon them. We think too of people who train others, how valuable it is to hand on ability and craftsmanship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those at the sharp end of danger, in working to bring, bring healing to others. May God protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose work is looking increasingly precarious as the lockdown continues and who are concerned about their future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember Joseph's integrity and godliness, and we pray that we would increase in our integrity and our godliness as we ponder our lives in these quieter times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who lack a good father figure in their experience, and we ask that they would come to know the fatherhood of God and his care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we take a moment to pray for all those who are feeling especially low today, anything but joyful. We pray for those we know to be ill at this time. And we pray for those suffering bereavement today. Especially we pray at the funeral of baby Amber Rose and the funeral of Winnie Wilkins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, the 21st of April, is St Anselm's Day. He was significant in the early 12th century as Archbishop of Canterbury, as a theologian and teacher of the Christian faith. And the church where I was previously vicar in Stanmore is dedicated to Anselm. So a prayer, a simple prayer, based on what Anselm wrote. Lord grant that we may desire you with all our heart, and so desiring may seek you, and seeking may find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Life is far from easy these days. It's a bit of a battle, not just with our situation, but in our minds and our spirits and our emotions. So this hymn reminds us of this, and identifies Jesus as the resource we have in fighting this battle. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength, and Christ thy right. Lay hold on life, and it shall be thy joy and crown eternally.
bear aside, lean on thy guide, his boundless mercy will provide. Trust, and thy trusting soul shall prove that Christ is its life, and Christ its love. Faint not nor fear, his arms are near, he changeth not, and thou art dear. Only believe, and thou shalt see that Christ is all in all to thee. Lord of work and practical care, may we do what we can today, and remember in our prayers those who are doing more. Lord of every part of our lives, draw alongside us in our isolated moments and turn our frustrations into your lasting peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love today and always. Amen. <laughs>